Okay, venerable brother, Dhamma friends. So we are going to have the last Dhamma or question and answer session of this Kalal Goda August retreat. And as usual, Chandrika is ready with some written questions, written reports. So we are going to start the session with written reports. We got few reports, Bhante. I haven't counted it as yet. <laughs> okay. So busy. <laughs> <laughs> Report number one. Venerable Bhante, sitting meditation. In sitting meditation, I start looking at the whole body. At the beginning, it's like a machine. Thoughts and feelings come together. First, I observe the body. When bodily feeling, sensation reduce, I look into the thoughts. After a while, I can feel the blank space. When this space expands, I can sense bodily feeling around it trying to pull back like a balloon. Again, I am sensing the whole bodily feelings. This kind of situation occur in Nisarana Vanaya. Dhammajiva Thero said, I am afraid of breaking the boundaries. How can I overcome it? Sometimes when I am sitting without closing eyes, my vision is getting blurred. Feelings and sensations reduce. At this time, what I hear, see and observe are not separated, but I observe it as one thing. Is this the breaking of boundaries? Please guide me to improve myself. Teruan Saranai. Yeah, may I know who has written it? Yeah, okay. Mm. So one thing is, uh, so when are you feeling that uh, pulling type of uh, feeling? When are you, I mean... At that moment, were you doing some kayanupasana related activity or you were observing the mind and there you are trying to get a break and still some pulling coming from the body? What is the situation like? Yeah, I think uh, I'm observing the mind. Uh, Look, observing the mind. Yeah. Observing the mind, but I mean, thoughts are coming and going. Now you come to come across a kind of absence of thoughts and then the... So this pulling sensation you yeah, felt again like? That, uh, again, that appearing body feeling like a... What you feeling again appear in that in that time? Right. Uh, so I, one I possibility know. is that uh, rather than immediately jump to chitta anupasana, first you can do a little bit of kaya anupasana. So you can recognize various sensations available in the body, and develop certain amount of understanding. And as a result of that, detach from the body. So that is the gradual path mentioned in many suttas, like say for example in Anapanasati Sutta. So the so that is the first stage or the last stage, last stage of the Kayanupasana stage. So where the bodily sensations are fairly subsided, your body calmed down, relaxed, and now you can't even feel the body. Now you are getting to the feelings, uh, what you call as the Chitta Sankara Patisangi, the Asasi Samiti Sikkati. You are now in the Vedana Anupasana section. They are also Buddha Sensei. Okay, Pasambhayan Chitta Sankharang Asasi Samiti Sikkati. So that is the end of the Chitta uh, Vedranupasana. All, this, all different kinds of feelings and even the uh, perceptions are all now subsided as a result of Vedranupasana. Now we are getting into the Chitta Anupasana. Chitta Pati Sangvedi Asasi Samiti Sikkati. So then, while you are engaged with Chitta Anupasana, now you see various thoughts, how they are behaving, how they are coming and going. Assume, now you found come across a kind of a blank area. Nothing is there. At that time, still the body already disappeared. Isn't it? So we went through that uh, kind of a systematic training where the body disappeared, almost let go of, and then the feelings that also let go of. Now we are dealing with the mind. There also, now you have nothing to feel. No even thoughts. So that way it's a bit easier. Do I, have to, do I have to wait that all the body feeling disappear? Normally that, uh, all that body feeling reduce, reduce mean uh, small, small body feeling happy. Ah, they are, yes. In that time I am going to my, uh, together to thought. the Chitta Anupasana. So that is the thing. So if, I mean, sometimes it is not necessary at all. The thing is, if you are sort of confident, you don't need to touch the body. Immediately you can jump to Chitta Anupasana where you recognize various thoughts and there you can go through a breakthrough. Nothing is there, but the thing is, as you said, there can't be a strong sensation which is pulling your attention. If there are some strong sensations pulling your attention, 
So naturally, so mind get involved with that. So, so the typical uh, first, how to say, say the beginning part of the yogi. So when we are first experiencing, not yet we are not yet familiarized with the uh, release state. Say the anupadana state, where the mind has no association with the body, no association with the gross feelings, no association with the thoughts. Not yet familiarized with that state. So once you are familiarized, then this long time. You are abide by for a long time. You are familiarized with that state. As a result of that, you can immediately jump to that. But not yet. <laughs> that when I was doing it, that when I looking at the uh, garden without doing much effort, it's automatically come uh, uh, this kind of state that my mind was there, thought, no thoughts, but my bodily feeling was uh, fade away. Was fade away or not? Fade away. That fade away. Uh -huh. Like I said, that I'm that, that, that what I'm seeing, hearing, all the thing as one. There are. Can you repeat? Uh, can you repeat? What I, I can I can feel that what I seeing here, but right. I'm not uh, doing any attention to one particular thing. Uh -huh. Just uh, like a blurred uh, vision. Correct. And uh, sometimes uh, that in that moment, I'm hearing. Uh, uh, it's called. Uh, Sounds sound of silence. Ah, sound like of silence. Mm -hmm. uh, but also that I'm not uh, go at go, not doing the attention for that one. Mm -hmm. And uh, bodily feeling also uh, like an, uh, it's also fade away. But time to time to time it's uh, thoughts are coming. But coming. you don't need to particularly pay attention to that. Is it uh, that that kind of situation? Uh, no, it's possible. The thing is, no. I mean. So these feelings are there, so bodily feelings are there. You may feel certain amount of uh, friction coming from that, but the mind is not involved in that. So mind, mind has the capacity to get detached from that even though they are there. So that's why even yesterday, even for an Arahant, that's the situation, no? So he sees various things, he is not blind, he can see, but mind is not involved. He hears various sounds, but mind is not involved. He may have various bodily sensations, but mind is not involved. Mind has found its own kind of a freedom. So once it is available, then well and good. But the thing is, initially, so we don't have this capacity yet developed in our mind. So that's why we need a kind of a systematic training. So we go through some thorough understanding of the practice of the Kayanupasana so that all the bodily cross sensations are subsided, it disappears. Then we go to the, uh, say, Vedana Upasana, all feelings are disappeared. Uh, perceptions, signs are all disappeared. Now we are in a well good shape. Only the matter is now with the sankharas, with the various kinds of thoughts. Only that part we need to handle now. Once it is also handled, nothing is there. Fairly free. So when you are familiarizing with this, and once you are fairly familiar in that uh, freed state, now you don't need to go from that systematic training. You know it. It's mind already recognize that. That's the thing. During the building up process, we need a kind of a uh, going through this uh, step by step process so that this is subsided, this is relaxed, this is uh, ceased. Uh, Vedana, Sanya, that is also ceased. Almost like that, you need uh, gradual upliftment. Up upliftment. So I know that in India, I can, uh, I am happy that after that happened, I am happy. But in, I'm, when I'm doing the sitting meditation, I, I can't come to that, that kind of So way. can you repeat uh, while walking you are No, no, not walking, just I'm sitting in the, that, uh, in the uh, dining hall and looking at the, uh, just the garden. In, I saw say, open, okay. Uh, yeah. In there, I can come to the that kind of uh, all of it. Away, I can come to that happy state. In happy the state, happy state, unattached mean, state. Is it? Yeah, that's so. Like what is the type of object at that time mind is associating? So, time to time, small, small uh, thoughts uh, coming. So coming. Yeah, yeah. That's why yeah. they are also. You need to consolidate that. Say thoughts are coming. That means little disturbance is still there. So that also has to somewhat disappear, so that mind become almost like a, you know, stand still, very clear water like, still ripples are there, no? So that's the point. So it's a gradual process we are going through. We can't come to a perfect, pure, still water immediately. 
little purities, impurities are there, time to time turbulence happen, waves happen. So everything has to be slowly, slowly settled. So don't worry, I mean, just continue the path. So once you reach, say you practice Chitta Anupasana, thoughts are coming and going, there you come across kind of a absence of thoughts, just settle there, just be there. There may be various sensations available, but no need to pay attention right now. Just see whether you can be in this state, paying more attention to the mind. Very much like forgetting about the body. Forget about the body, now we are, you are in the mind. Body may have various sensations, each may be pains and all these things, don't worry. But you are very much in this, uh, paying more attention onto this blankness, nothingness. So there are probably, your mind ignore all these things as the samadhi develops in the mind side. So it's again a kind of a samadhi we are developing. So once it is fairly strong, so it may let go of the body. So automatically you can dive through that. You can try. <laughs> how about walking? Why, how, what happened during the walking? It's walking meditation, also that kind of situation, I don't know uh. what I said. So last time I can remember you were mentioning about various things are there, but you, your mind is now no need to pick anything, right? Something like that, choiceless awareness. Are you coming to that in walking? That's good. So, say, sights are there, but mind does not, does not want to get involved. Sensations are there, but still mind does not want to involve. So, like that? Yeah, in the walking meditation, sometimes I feel that walking in the... I'm not, I'm not moving, I'm walking, that kind of situation. Uh, I'm not walking? I'm not moving, uh -huh. yeah. But I'm walking in there, in the one place I'm walking. Uh, you mean, mind is not moving, body is walking. Am I correct? When I'm walking, uh, that all the thing around me passing away, I'm ah. uh, that kind of situation. Uh, seems all right. Anyway, just continue, we'll see. <laughs> so, a little bit of a transition is there. So, you are still settling. You may come across that. Just, just continue. Yeah. We have re six reports, man. Okay. <laughs> Report number two, Teruan Saranai, Garu Swami in Mahansa. Walking meditation. I was advised to increase the walking time. Keeping this in my mind, started the meditation on the choir mat with a normal speed. Felt rough places of the mat to the feet. Hardness and roughness was very clear than walking on a sand path. There wasn't much distractions from the surrounding. After several minutes of walking, felt a movement of a current-like sensation from ankle and to the toes. Along with that, a ticklish feeling on all over the soul was there throughout the walking. This sensation was moving a current and the tickling was more on the right foot when compared to the left foot. Continued to walk with the same speed for about 40 to 45 minutes and experienced the said sensation slightly less and more during the walking meditation until I sat, until I stopped. Sitting meditation, sat with a comfortable posture, listened to the sounds in the surrounding, automatically I felt the rising and falling of chest area, focused on the chest with the thought, breath, breathing and breathing out. This is the way I start meditation, but every time it finishes after about 15 to 20 minutes. Each time the experience is different. It does not seem as a continuation. Seeking your advice. This yogi would like to talk, really. Yeah, please. <laughs> so, so you feel that it's not continuing, so that means uh, different times, different experiences? Yes. Monday. During sitting? Yes. Or during even walking? Walking, mostly the same, uh -huh. but uh, sitting, different uh, experiences. Can you explain a little bit more about the difference? What's the difference uh, you experience? Uh, sometimes uh, when I focus on the breath, right. uh, I can see uh, the long breath or the short breath and I have uh, felt the breath uh, becoming shorter. Uh -huh. And uh, Sometimes it becomes longer, is that the problem? <laughs> sometimes <laughs> I know it's like yawning or something like that, uh -huh. long breath comes. Right, right. Uh, then um, sometimes uh, some unawareness bhante, I don't oh. know whether I'm s okay. sleeping or not. Are you completely distracted? Not 
distracted. I just don't know. Like it's like sleeping. I, sleeping. I, I think uh -huh. I fell. I must have fell asleep. Right, right, right. And then uh, I uh, again I can see uh, feel the wind or the breeze and uh, some sensations of the body pains right. and all. Right. Some days, sometimes it's like that. Correct. And okay. uh, uh, it, the circles like that. Going on. Several, mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, also I have felt, not today or yesterday, so one before time, uh, I have heard that you have to look at the breath from the beginning to the end. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I was looking at the breath, I have seen uh, end of the breath and there's a slight, uh, it, it doesn't stop. I don't know where it goes and then after some time it starts again in breath. Uh -huh. So the slight gap, I think, uh, I have experienced So are you maintaining well. your attention at the nostril or are you following the breath? Uh, I'm trying to, uh, I have tried like to how, whether I can feel the breath uh, over the nostril but I have not uh, experienced Experience. it. Experience. So uh, where are you experiencing the breath? So how are you recognizing this is the in-breath and this is the out-breath? In order to do that recognition, where are you maintaining your attention? Uh, falling and rising of the area, chest area or the shoulders. And ah. while fall, uh, rising, uh, I, I'm thinking that I'm breathing in. Ah, no, 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 no. Uh -huh. So there are you, actually, the, we need to properly, physically feel it very much, not through the, I mean, if you are into the rising and falling, that they are, in one sense, it's correct. It is also not imagining. Rather, we need to feel it. So, assume that we are keeping our hands here. So, as we are breathing in, so the abdomen comes forward. A little slight movement of the hands happen. No? So, as we breathe out, it goes back. A slight movement is there towards the hands. So, that physical movement is something that we need to sense. So, similarly, in Nanapanasati, we are maintaining our attention closer to the nostril. You don't need to exactly find out the place at the beginning. It's difficult. Later it is possible. But at the beginning, you are maintaining just your attention closer to the nostril. And there you recognize, you can ask from the mind or rather from yourself, is it the in-breath or is it the out-breath right now happening? So some knowing part is there always. So your body will tell you, okay, now it is the in-breath going on. There are various indicators, like say a little bit of a rubbing sensation happen as a because of, as a result of this uh, air passage moving inside to the nostril. So when you are feeling that, so then you recognize, okay, this is the in breath; it is going inside. And maybe when it is coming outside, you feel it's going to the opposite direction. There you understand, okay, that is the uh, sort of uh, the out breath, or maybe in the in breath. Maybe it is cooler, out breath is warmer. So likewise, there are various such differences are there using which only you know, okay, this is the in-breath, this is the out-breath, but you are not imagining or you are not thinking, nothing is there. So basically, you should know that knowing part is what we are improving. Now, say for example, now you are holding the mic. So you can know there is a hardness, isn't it? So there may be a little heaviness, a weight is there. That's a, that's a feeling, that's a knowing, that's a direct knowledge. So same thing here, so when breathing in happens, so you know, oh, now it's in breath, now it is out breath. So likewise, that knowing part, something that we need to give some attention. So, Bantina, I have tried to ah, find that fine. Uh, for about, say, one year. <laughs> one year, oh, say. But then but actually now, in the way you explain, by the way, is more into the abdominal movement, no, probably you can shift to that then. It's more easier. No need to try to recognize the breath. Hmm? How about recognizing this abdominal movement? As I just explained, say it is, as we breathing in, it is coming little front. As we breathe out, it will be like this, kind of a movement, a slight movement happens, no, in this diaphragm and all that uh, chest area. So you be with that. Just be with that and be with that complete sensation. So there's a slight movement happen, a movement happen, you are completely being with that movement. Your attention is quite coupled with this movement. Assume this is the bodily muscle or whatever it is moving, going up and front and the back. So now you are coupling your attention with that. So you are closely observing this movement, closely observing the going back. So this paying attention coupled your mental 
attributes and your physical that movement are full very really correctly synchronized like yeah okay that's correct that is the correct thing that's the correct thing so be with that and there you may understand okay it's starting like this and uh, at the end it feels like this and there may be a little absence of anything there's a kind of a gap kind of a rest period now it is softly coming back kind of lightness is there so you feel that you know that so that is the important thing so just be with that so forget about anapanasati no need <laughs> okay yeah Report number three. Bhante, this has two parts. One is about yesterday's sermon. The other one is her practice. I'll read separately. Uh, Teruan Saranai, Venerable Swami in Vahansa. According to yesterday's Dhamma sermon, Dukkha Dukkha and Viparinama Dukkha are unavoidable. But we can be free from Sanskara Dukkha. That is what my understanding. Is that correct? Yeah, I can agree with you. But on the other hand, Dukkha Dukkha... to look at the course so we have some additional our added part <coughs> as we discussed say assume that uh, say you you fall on a tree now dukkha dukkha is there now you broke under the leg and dukkha is there now to that you may add so many other things so that is that is very much like a sankara dukkha you are adding duk on top of dukkha dukkha you are adding another fabricated part your own self made suffering so that part if we are reduced so then only the pure dukkha dukkha is there so similarly to so viparinama dukkha you may have a lot of additional added self created suffering so that part slowly we have to remove discard and then only the viparinama dukkha is there assume that now you are getting old so your body is aching so you have kind of viparinama dukkha unavoidable but you are going through that you are coping with that so you are not adding your mental part to that and the sankara dukkha is purely fairly So we are some something additional we are doing so we we don't know how to maintain a peaceful mind we are interrupting the process we are pa- trying to participate the process we are going to change the process we are fabricating around the process so all that is in a way our own added suffering self created suffering so in the subsiding of sankharas allowing the sankharas to calm down relax so at that moment so this that self created suffering sankhara dukkha the formations and all that is fairly subsided so that's why now say that you are comfortably sitting close to your eyes as much as possible you are not doing any kind of a manipulation sounds are happening they go smells are happening they are going eyes are closed taste are not there i mean you simply have mouth mouth closed and what the sensations are there they are also coming and going so likewise you can we are in a way reducing that sankara dukkha still thoughts may appear that also we are now letting go even that is we are reducing suppose we are in a situation where all the sankaras are subsided no volition at all so that is the perfect level we are complete peace so mind is completely settled no thoughts complete silence no creations no fabrications <clears throat> so considerable calming down is there yeah part 2 the only meditation what i am doing now is watching the mind at every possible time and it is a habit now so there are no thought zones even during the day to day work sometimes do vedana pasana do sometimes do vedana pasana if my legs start hurting in the night feeling like not being any medita- not doing any meditation please guide me much merit to you is it yours no no <laughs> wrong wrong guess <laughs> wrong guess <laughs> okay okay fine by the way it's correct so almost like you are coming to a level uh, where you you feel like no meditation is now going on but but mind has no any burden there can't be any burden there can't be any grasping and uh, there is no any tension no stress available in that state so are you meditating <laughs> so so the till we have someone to meditate isn't it so then i am meditating so i am there i am meditating 
So the moment that uh, even there is no I, so the complete calmness is there, peace is there, no grasping is there. So how I can happen, how I can be created without grasping? So one interesting rule taught by Pundamantani Putta to young venerable uh, Anand. Upadaya tiko auso Ananda smiti hoti nao anupadaya. Ananda, only when upadaya, this uh, clinging is there, then only the eye making happens. Asmiti happens. You know, the asmi, I am, that happens. So, the moment that we are maintaining a complete non grasping state, no clinging, no association at all, mind is free. Can't have an eye. So, he is meditating. Just, just be, just enjoy. <laughs> So that's why, so our, our way of meditation has a kind of a switching, kind of a transition. At the beginning we are struggling, we are doing, we have a schedule, we have to meet the schedule, we have to cover many hours, I am meditating. <laughs> necessary. Don't think that it's not necessary, it is necessary. But later as we are further maturing in our path, especially when we are recognizing the release state of mind, non-grasping state of mind, now we have to switch, now we have to simply dwell in that state being in that state, so that things are coming and going and we are adjusting ourselves, balancing ourselves. It is not that we are trying to change anything, rather we are, we, we ourselves changed, like water. Previously we are, we are asking for this and that and we want to manipulate, we want to complain and, uh, you know, control the world, <laughs> correct the world. But now we are like water, the situation we are adjusting. So that water takes the shape of the vessel, something like that. So you know how to navigate the path, something like that. So the frictionless path, friction free path, very much like. So very beautifully actually Buddha mentioned that. So that is the Thadi, the state of the Thadi. Ehu Kyanima, so that I don't know, the suchness, different terms Buddha use, kind of a suchness. So you are, you are like that. But still, even though I am telling you are like that, so it doesn't mean that I am that. I mean, very difficult to say, you know, I mean, still there can be wrong interpretations. It is not I am that. If I am that, then I am still there. <laughs> so you can't be anything as such. So that is where the atamme tave come, come to the picture. Non-identification comes to the picture. So you are no one, basically. So you are simply flowing through the situation, being no one, being nobody, going nowhere. Like in the beautiful book, uh, Ayakema. What's Ayakema mentioned, being nobody, going nowhere. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> they don't sound like, yeah. Report number four. Can you please explain what the inside knowledges are and how to maintain those? <laughs> so you have to allow it to naturally happen. So when it is happening, then we can discuss and we can, it's not uh, purposefully we are trying to maintain, we can say the continuous practice will be the way of maintenance. You can't willfully arouse something, rather let the thing naturally evolve. So sometimes actually certain meditation techniques are there, they are you know, condition in the mind, okay, you now you are practicing, what's that, Namuru uh, Pariche uh, Dhyana, okay, now you are practicing Udayabbe Dhyana. <laughs> so, sharp boundaries. It's not the teaching, I, I don't think. <coughs> Rather, let it happen naturally. So you are slowly, slowly developing these things, the way the, how we are looking at them, say, the more you do the investigation, so all these possibilities are there, so let it happen naturally, let it blossom, rather than you try to open the flower, <laughs> let the flower naturally blossom. So there, now that's why, I mean, I, I, f I personally feel, so that's why <clears throat> we as Sri Lankans, or maybe as Theravadas, so we have somewhat restricted to the that uh, seven, purif seven purifications. So it's a kind of systematic 
you know, we from the, what that, from Sila Visuddhi, you go to the uh, Chitta Visuddhi, from Chitta Visuddhi, you go to the Ditta Visuddhi, from Ditta Visuddhi, you go to the Kanka Vitarana Visuddhi. So, step by step process, that is also there. Not, not, it's not, not present, it is there. But it doesn't mean that uh, we have to wait till everything is 100% perfect in the Sila Visuddhi to go and little bit practice of Chitta Visuddhi. And to completely have Chitta Visuddhi, then only we can have the Ditta Visuddhi. So all these things are slowly, slowly developing, it's maturing. So let the things happen naturally as much as possible. No need to have very strong demarcations or divisions among these things. So they are all supportive. So typically in the in Sutta, if you are coming to the Sutta teachings, so there Buddha mainly say, okay, you maintain certain amount of sila. Now you practice. So it will contribute towards the samadhi. It will contribute towards the wisdom. So likewise, they are fairly interconnected. They are supporting to each other. Yeah. So the, and the other thing is this. Now, during the Buddha's time, so the people who are practicing, so they have a kind of a goal. Goal in the sense... So they are they are not much analytically recognizing, okay, this is the this particular jnana. In that book that is mentioned like that, that monk mentioned like this, oh I should be here now. So that is not that way that they are thinking. Rather they want to get liberated or they want to overcome all the defilements. That's a, that's a very much like this whole purpose. But later what happened was now they without meditating they start analyzing. <laughs> Now, now they have a lot of jnanas, you know. Previously assumed that Buddha mentioned about sila and then samadhi and panya. Maybe a little bit detail, okay, sila, there are different kinds of sila and then samadhi, different kinds of samadhi, different kinds of panya, fine. And later people start thinking too much, analytical knowledge. So they have come up with, uh, say, nine vipassana knowledges, twelve vipassana knowledges, eighteen vipassana knowledges, many, many, many vipassana knowledges and then today a person who is looking at my goodness how can I have all those <laughs> it's almost impossible very difficult because how many things are there to achieve how can I get into the practice so do you think that young so Parker know all these <laughs> See, I mean so that's the thing so that's an interesting point here it's not that how much we know ultimately matter now, if we compare two arahants, say assume that the Venerable Sopaka and Venerable Sariputta, from the knowledge point of view, Venerable Sariputta is comprehensive knowledge. Do you think Venerable Sopaka has the same capacity? I don't think, but fully liberated arahant. So the point is, so some of us need a lot of knowledge to have the breakthrough and to maintain that that kind of category is there. Another person doesn't need that much. So once he know that, okay, mind get liberated, mind get free. So the freedom is the important thing. Non-grasping is the important thing. Not that how much we know. So what we know is a supportive condition, but the result is the important thing. So that is highlighted in certain suttas. So Buddha mentioned, I can't uh, remember that uh, Katha Vattu Sutta. Kathavattu Sutta, the final statement, if you can refer, go and refer that Kathavattu Sutta. So Buddha categorically highlights, so sole purpose of what we are doing, sole purpose of our discussion, sole purpose of lending our e eyes, lending our ears and understanding, uh, having a discussion, pondering, whole purpose of this, nothing but liberating mind. That's it. Anupada Chittasa Vimokko. So without clinging to anything, you have the chittasa vimokko, so the mind get freed. That's it. So for a certain person, it takes a lot of knowledge together in order to achieve this. Another person with some little knowledge, still the freedom may happen. Same freedom. So therefore we can't say that everybody has to have perfect same amount of knowledge. Without that you can't come to this. You can't have a, such a generalized rule. For certain person, only little little knowledge is enough to have the freedom. That's why there are certain arahants, you know, it's mentioned in the Dhammapada, 
he know only one verse that's all he know every day whenever someone is asking him to give a dhamma sermon he only say then what that that one verse that's all <laughs> nothing else no knowledge about the canon no knowledge about the, the uh, other say sutta pitaka that and this and this nothing is there just one verse he know that's all but fully enlightened arhant a, uh, i can't name there's a beautiful name given to him eka eka not eka vihari i can't someone so so interesting thing is so one day i think two monks came to meet him so the interesting thing is when he is giving a dhamma sermon using this single verse all the celestial beings around that uh, forest they say sadhu sadhu because he know that he living up to that he is knowing and telling that right so he living up to that he is in that so everybody happy about it appreciate that devas are appreciating that now people heard about it so some monks they are learned monks so they come to him to visit him and now they also you know they are well experts in the tipitaka you know tipitaka dhari blah 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 <laughs> so they they do the same different all hours of sermons no response <laughs> from the devas from the devas then they go and complain to and they go and tell that monk you said that you are preaching when devas are you know praising and saying sadhu sadhu but we were teaching for long time but no response i can't believe now we can't believe now you do it and see, st- show us then he took the you know this thing like this and he tell, he uttered that verse so they were say sadhu sadhu and whatever the you know the huge appreciation was there then they went and complained to buddha <laughs> and buddha also took which side arahant side arahant side that's why buddha you know uh, condemn potila can you remember tuchcha potila that he know a lot about the dhamma but not lived up to dhamma not not understood the dhamma lot of knowledge is there but not understood not realized the dhamma so the realizing part is the important thing some may have very little knowledge about the you know the theoretical stuff but they are experience in the so the freed state of mind but some may are experts they are the you know the professors but not practiced not experience these uh, states so that practicing that uh, the experience Uh, the release state so that is the most important thing yeah okay report number 5 garu swami in vahansa it is told that the lifetime of a nama is only one chittakshana and everything gets erased immediately without remaining anything but we remember many things happened in the past how come is that does it get stored anywhere if so where kindly explain teru <laughs> answer <laughs> Uh, it's a continuation i mean nothing remains for long time so all the as you are saying all the chit, uh, what's that the chetasika so uh, thoughts everything is momentary but even though everything is momentary kind of a momentum is transferred to the other level so that is the only way we can uh, explain it in a way so not that uh, a particular memory lasts for long time now say nowadays now you are keeping uh, some data stored in a chip what do you think this is there so is that chip permanent <laughs> so all the all the electrons protons everything is transient right everything's breaking and all these things but somehow this uh, gathered information is there retained isn't it so that is the technology so same thing maybe so the so we all these thought moments all the consciousness all the perceptions all the formations all the forms are constantly arising and passing away nothing remains for a second moment momentary everything is momentary but the interesting thing is even though this momentary process is there ongoing some kind of momentum is transferred kind of a energy being transferred even this uh, fluctuations in these oscillations so you can do an experiment and find out <laughs> yeah
That, that's all? It, no, have some more. Okay. Uh, report number six. This has two questions. Dear Bhante, yesterday we discussed about five aggregates including material form, rupa. How about mental objects and how far those contributes to Sankara? Part two. Also, please explain the logical sequence of five aggregates. Thank you, with Vitmetta. So, first one, you are talking about the form aggregate. So, form aggregate and the... Uh, How about mental objects? Mental, mental objects. Form, the relationship? Impact of mental objects? Ah. Ah, ah, ah. So, basically, I mean, there are... I mean, when it comes to sang the subject of Sankharas, so there are... All possibilities are there. Different possibilities are there. There is a very interesting sutta, uh, Kaya Sutta, or oh, can't re exactly remember the name of that. So there are Buddha mentioned. So there are sankharas which can happen due to our own volition, our own initiation. There are sankharas which can happen because of someone else's persuasion. That is also there. And some sankharas are there without our participation. That is also possible. So likewise, it's a very complicated area. So it, many... Is it possible to give an example for the third one? Actually, I also thought that uh, mental objects may create by uh, what you call sankhara. No, thing is uh, uh, asampajana kaya sankhara, asampajana chitta sankhara. So likewise, that asampajana is there. So it is not that I purposely generated that. Something continuing due to other causes. There is no sampajana in myself in that. This is not that I knowingly do it, but something ongoing. It's, it happened due to other reasons, other causes and conditions, but not because that I want them to. I didn't, it's not my, my volitional activity. That is, is it uh, possible to say that mental objects are generating from volition or... Uh, Mental objects are generated due to volition. Mm. The mental objects. Now, when it come, when it, when we are saying the term mental objects, so mental objects, sankharas are part of it. So, what are you? How are you defining the mental objects? What is your definition? No, the, those are not actually uh, existing. Those are virtually existing objects. Virtually existing mental objects. Yeah. In the sense, like uh, it's not like rupa, like physical objects, uh -huh. but it's, Say it's you created, remember someone. It's Say created you remember. by the mind itself. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So assume that you remember something. Yeah. So you remember color of the vehicle, something. So all these are we can say mental objects. Yeah. It may have a certain relationship. So you have associated that long time ago. You are imagining that long time ago, uh, or say to so learn about that some time back. Definitely, definitely. So the thing is, so these mental objects can happen due to many reasons, many causes. Uh, but the important thing is, why are we doing further manipulations to that? Why are we doing further, we are giving more emphasis to that, more value to that and multiplying that. We are thinking too much about them, right? I mean, um, once a mental object there, Dhamma is there, mental object happen. So, without fabricating on top of that, multiplying on top of that, thinking about on top of that, so why can't I simply let it go? Isn't it? So, that is the key thing that we are learning. So, all the knowledge that we gather is ultimately throw away. We are learning to throw away. <laughs> Isn't it? It's not that we want to gather as much as possible then and say, I am the expert, I am so and so. Then the opposite side we have gone. So Dhamma is there to let go. That's, uh, that's a very, what's that uh, popular statement? Uh, uh, Pahura, what's that? Kullu upamango bhikkave dhammam desi sami nittaranattaya no gahanattaya. So uh, monks, I am teaching Dhamma similar to a raft. Not to grasp, but to let go. But to use it and then to cross to the other show. So likewise, all the learning, all the discussions, all these, you know, hearing and everything is there for us to cross, to go to the other show, not to hold anything, ultimately. So, 
So I mean, it's necessary to investigate these things, discuss these things, and you know, be clear about this. Very true. But at the same time, important thing is, so whenever these mental objects happen, so the practice help us to recognize them and to let it go, rather than fabricating around it. <laughs> okay. That's all the questions. There is a suggestion. If this retreat could be made a three-night program, even the whole day of the third day also could be used fully. For your consideration, please. Yes, good. <laughs> so you can discuss with uh, Mrs. Dilhara. So she is the sole, you know, proprietor of this. Uh, <laughs> Goda Meditation Center and uh, coordinator, everything, you know, organizer. <laughs> we'll see, I mean, we'll have a discussion and see, we'll see. And then three nights, including Sunday night, is it? Oh, the Thursday night. Maybe Thursday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday half day. Sunday full day. Hmm? No, you, you discuss among yourselves and put it me. <laughs> Three full days, not, not uh, Sunday half day. Mm. We'll see. <laughs> yeah, I, I also sometimes back I was thinking why we are concluding halfway. Because, I mean, it's not uh, like a mitrigal retreat where you spend long, say, five days, six days, and then last day you have to travel long distance. But here, mostly, they are close by and they can go too. Uh, at least, maybe around 5 p.m. or something we can close, so that is possible. The, in, the thing is, usually, when I am coming to Kalalgoda, so some coincident retreat is there, so I am closing this at 1.30 something, and then I am going to that then I need to change that, not a big thing. But now also today, also I'm going to Chitta Vyaka Ashrama, there's a retreat going on. So that's why uh, today I started this at 12.30. So, but uh, if you are in need of uh, having a full day on Sunday, possible we can adjust accordingly, no problem. You come to a conclusion and let me know, we'll see. But anyway, the certain dates are already fixed for this year, by the way. Please remember that uh, already informed to Venerable Metta Vihari and all these things are somewhat uh, uh, established now. Maybe may this year we have to work through like this. Maybe we can look forward in the future. Okay, we'll see. Okay, that's all uh, we have. I think uh, you have no more questions. <laughs> are there any questions? Oh, yes, yes, okay. It's about this memory. Mm. The like when you do vipassana meditation, like if you let go of the past and let go of the go backwards and then let go of the future mm -hmm. and the present moment. It's the letting go is like say me getting. Can you keep mic? Yeah. Upadana, you know, let go of the clinging. Mm -hmm. But the past is still there. Past is still there? Yeah, but it's not with me. Uh -huh. is, that, is that the notion? Because the, what has happened will be like for Kusala and Akusala and all those things. There we has been an effect no, of, from what we have done. Uh -huh. So it, that memory is recorded or somewhere. In mm -hmm. So that is not the memory. We are, you are talking the karma now. Yes. Kamma. But, yeah. but the, uh, when you let go, it is letting go of the clinging mm -hmm. of the past, mm -hmm. of your past, because that is what we uh, happen to do, prapancha uh -huh. and things, you know, all the time. And then for the future also, we always say we will do this, we will do that and various things. So that is the... Uh, like controlling and letting mm. go of that. Isn't that the 
Uh, so this thing is, uh, as we continue in the vipassana path, hmm, so the moment that we recognize the non-self, hmm. where you are not trying to recognize yeah. anyone as hmm. a person, as an individual, yeah. Yeah. so there we are going in a different path, taking a different approach, where intentionally eye-making, mind-making is not promoted. Yeah. And as a result of that, the path is very much like uh, uh, not generating future karma, and past come, uh, I mean, we have no control. Yeah. Control in the sense they may have a certain impact, mm. but that also fairly minimized because the path we are developing is so powerful in that sense. That's why even yesterday we discussed the all the false, all four satipatthanas are utterly wholesome. So we are developing wholesome path. So it has immense power mm. even to minimize or so dilute the impact of the past come. So that is possible, even it is according to the Lona Pala Sutta. Assume that we have a certain amount of bad karma to, uh, come, to come to an effect. Mm. But as we are enhancing our wholesome power, so, it, so this bad impact becomes somewhat reduced. Mm. So such thing is possible. Right. So therefore, it is not that uh, uh, we, are, we are trying to nullify this, rather we are enhancing our capacity mm. in the present level, so that we are not generating new unwholesome karma or new even much wholesome karma. We are, by the way, a separate path now we are going through. As a result of that, even the old karma doesn't find much impact. Opportunity. Hmm. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. <laughs> Can I add something? Sure, sure. Uh, when I realize the past is a thought hmm. that this comes to person. That's a person thought. Yes, the past when has gone. Past, past is the, no more yeah. available. And when I see it's going, passing away. Even the future. Uh, yeah. And when I realize it truly, I feel like the half of a burden has gone, gone and exactly. left. Exactly. Left, I left the past. That's right. Thumb that's, thumb why, that's why Buddha mentioned, Atita nanvagamiya na patikanke anagatang. So don't, I mean, Atita has happened. The past has happened. Don't worry about it now. So future hasn't come yet. So don't think about that either. Pachu pananche yodhammam tata tata vipassati. So now the present moment phenomena, now even there you do proper indication, proper attention, you do the wise attention, tata tata vipassati. Then and there you do this proper vipassana. So that you are not grasping even that. Past also let go of, future also not grasped, and even the present you are not grasping. <laughs> so, so, and the, in the in the other sense, when when there is no person who is making the karma, isn't it? So the karma to happen. So I have to have an intention. Chetana hambikve kamangvadami. So I have to have a strong eye, so that eye has killed an animal. So karma is there. Say when I don't have eye, eye making is not there personification is not there and even the hate is not there so then the killing may or naturally stopped isn't it so likewise so the the, the path become completely different approach in a way so we may be recognizing a path all the uh, that that's why in the the last verse in the ratana sutta kinam puranam navan nati sambhava so the all the past come is almost like kinam uh, ceased, uh, deteriorated or, how to say, faded away. And now nati sambhava. So there is no new generation of the karma. Viratta chitta ayatike bhavasmi. So viratta chitta, now without making any kind of a, a defiled state in the mind, so he is continuing the life. <laughs> It's a different approach in a way. So we think, okay, every time we have to bite by the karma, we become helpless victim of the karma. No. There is a possibility to, in a way, I, we can't say that we are capable of completely eradicating karma. Even the Buddha has gone through certain amount of impact coming from the karma. But the last, vast majority certainly discarded, abandoned.
Yeah. Sorry, Nancy, can I ask you a question? Yeah. So basically, let's say in meditation, you are in this quiet place, mm. and then it doesn't last for, for no, something comes up, mm -hmm. a thought or a pay, uh, some sort of thing comes up. Right. So then, at that point, there's no upadana for that to come up. Correct. Is that the latent tendencies that is happening for something to come up or? Come up. So you are asking why this came up. Yeah. Is it due to latent tendency? It's not. Up there's no upadana as far as I can see. Correct. At that point. Correct. But it has happened. Something is coming, coming up. up. Yeah. yeah. So Maybe we can say like that due to various causes. So that's why I mean we can't say exactly due to this reason. So there may be various reasons. I can't ex immediately, uh, you know, memorize or remember about a particular, you know, point kind of a sutta exactly explaining this. But the thing is, thoughts can occur due to many reasons, many causes. A sanya, a thought, a feeling can occur due to many reasons. The main reason may be the sparsha, spasa. So when we are seeing, it can generate. When you are hearing, it can generate. It becomes the most recent, uh, close reason for this to ignite, to trigger. But many, the ground is already prepared, so the potential is there for these thoughts to appear. Important thing, as you said, is even though they come, I simply let it go. Because I know it will pass away. Now that is why even to the Arahant level, that's why it's mentioned, all the things he go through, he see things, he hear things, but he's, he know that he's passing away. It's going away. I don't need to bother about it. I don't need to change. I don't need to control. I don't need to manipulate because I know it's passing away. Why should I burn my hand? Something like that. Isn't it? Yes. So, I can't, I, you know, looking at the cause is one important thing, but difficult to find all the causes. Isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> so I am just minding my own business, okay, they are coming and going. Thoughts without a thinker. <laughs> okay. So we have reached almost one thirty, then I will conclude in the question and answer session. So thank you very much for your attentive participation and uh, we are concluding today's uh, uh, question and answer session and concluding the retreat. That's a short sharing of merits. Uh, morning dana. Teruvan Saranai, may the merit from today's morning dana be shared with my great grandparents, grandparents, mom, and my beloved son, Kushan Dinesh, Keshan Dinesh. May they all be happy, well, and attain Nibbana. May all of us achieve. Achieve what? Thanking, thinking? Ah, we may all of us achieve thinking without thought. <laughs> thinking without thoughts. No, that's wrong. <laughs> thinking always has thoughts. Maybe you can say uh, knowing without thoughts. That may be much better. Anumodana Dayani. And then the Indira Kannangara. Punyana Modana Dhawaldane, Monika Kanangara Vanyan Hata Nirogi Sua Dirga Shutsu Patima Saha, KK W Kanangara Pianan Hata Nivansu Patima, Aramun Karagina, Tarka Kanangara, Sohyura Hata Saha Dudaruan Hatat, Nirogi Suya Dirgasha Patima, Chandrika Sidwa, Chitra Sidwa, Manyanta Niduk Nirogi Bhavaya Pratana Kirima, Saha Parlo Sapat, Padita Pedasa Pianan Hata Nivansu Patima, Aramun Karagina Dina Pinkama Sadha Daikate Daran Ladi. Okay, so those are the short uh, sharing of merits. So all the merits that we have gathered, let's share with all the past relatives, all celestial beings and whoever need, uh, in need of merits. And we wish these merits also to help us attain path, fruition, nibbana. While keeping these good wishes in our mind, let's recite the traditional verses. Etavata cham hehi sambatang punya sampadang Sambhe deva anumodantu sabba sampatti siddhiya Ettavata cham hehi sambhatang punya sampadang Sabbe bhuta anumodantu sabba sampatti siddhiya Ettavata cham hehi sambhatang punya sampadang Sabbe satta anumodantu sabba sampatti siddhiya 
आकाशट्ठा च बुम्मट्टा देवानागा महिदिका पुण्यंतं अनुमोदित्वा चिरं रखान्तु सासनं आकाशट्ठा च बुम्मट्टा देवानागा महिदिका पुण्यंतं अनुमोदित्वा चिरं रखान्तु देशनं आकाशट्ठा च बुम्मट्टा देवानागा महिदिका पुण्यंतं अनुमोदित्वा चिरं रखान्तु मंपरं इदं वो न्याति नं होतु सुकिता होन्तु न्यातयो इदं वो न्याति नं होतु सुकिता होन्तु न्यातयो इदं वो न्याति नं होतु सुकिता होन्तु न्यातयो इमिना पुण्य कम्मे न मामे बाल समागमो सतं समागमो होतु यावनिबान पत्तिया इमिना पुण्य कम्मे न मामे बाल समागमो सतं समागमो होतु यावनिबान पत्तिया इमिना पुण्य कम्मे न मामे बाल समागमो सतं समागमो होतु यावनिबान पत्तिया साधु साधु साधु